uh, we spoke to uh, someone on the Gaza side of this, and that's when I talked to uh, Dan Dyker, director of the Political Warfare Project, Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. Sir, hi there. Um, no matter how you look at it, this argument's been going on, the tit for tat, especially recently over the last seven months or so, it's, it's really ramped up, one side blaming the other. Nonetheless, every week, more and more Palestinians are being killed. As I asked our other guests, what's going to give here? Well, let's be very clear about what we're seeing. This, uh, this death campaign by Hamas and its Iranian backer plays very well on television. You take three young boys who unfortunately were killed, but they were clearly approaching an open fire zone that had been established by Hamas six months ago. Let's be very clear about what's going on. There are no wildlife reserves the way the uh, Hamas uh, official spokesman talked about it, where these boys were, apparent, according to them, uh, looking for wild birds. These boys were laying down explosive devices that the Hamas has pays them thousands of dollars to do, and the Iranians What, what proof have, have you got? I mean, their family on one side activity. is saying, no, they were setting bird nets. They say they live in this area. The guests we had on before saying there are unfortunate people that have to live near this buffer zone. What proof have you got to say that, that they were there planting explosives? Let me tell you something about the IDF. The IDF, the Israel Defense Forces, is the only army in the Middle East, and I would argue one of the only armies, if the only army in the world, that has multiple layers of confirmation before it, it issues open fire orders on anybody. And I can tell you something else. If your children were anywhere near a hostile border area that the Israeli government, the Israeli army has said, stay away from that border because we have uh, documented empirical evidence of scores of attempts and successful attempts to breach the border fence to kill and kidnap Israelis. So if I was a parent, I wouldn't let my child anywhere near that border fence. And the only reason that they were near that hostile border fence is to either cut the these fence or plant explosives or kill or kidnap Israelis. It's the only olds, reason. Yeah. There's no other logical reason for them to be there. There's no other reason for them to be there. There's even, there's no tit for tat here. This is a very clear case of Hamas and Iranian sponsored uh, a, a terrorist activity near the border fence. Those boys should have been sleeping in their beds, in their homes, not on oh. the border, on, not in the border area. Where do you draw the line along this buffer zone? Just to explain to the uninitiated around the world, including me, I'd like some more clarity on it. This buffer zone, how, how far are you allowed to approach it then as far as, uh, as, far as Israel sees it? The IDF has established a buffer zone of a few hundred meters in order to guarantee the safety of the Hamas-incited Gaza public. Let's be very clear about this. The Hamas has sent hundreds of thousands of women and children uh, and others to the fence in order to try to create television blood drama in order to mobilize the international media against Israel. There's no question about it. It's political warfare. It's a classic uh, it's a classic uh, campaign. Well, it's, it's a strategy that the it's Soviet fact, these Union people are us, dying. and it's is been there, adopted by the Hamas. Is there going to come a time on this hotly contested border where at any point uh, you're going to reach out an olive branch, the Israeli side's going to reach out an olive branch here and say, look, this can't go on as it is. Do you think there's any hope for some sort of uh, reconciliation, well, not, not, not reconciliation, some sort of talks to just calm the heat out of this a bit? Let me ask you a question. Would there be any reconciliation talks between Chechnya and Islamic radicals and the Russian about central that subject. government? We're talking about Is the there subject any reconciliation bring, talks between uh, Al-Qaeda? So it's exactly the same case. You, you, you need to be very clear. D don't, don't create a false comparison between the democratic state of Israel and a radical Islamic terror organization called Hamas, which is called an Islamic terror resistance organization. They are completely connected to ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, PFLP, PIJ, and all kinds of Iranian-sponsored mm. uh, um, uh, terror organizations in Iraq spanning the entire Middle East. So there's no false comparisons that need to be made here. The, 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 there is no hotly contested border. This is a border that Israel unilaterally withdrew from Gaza in, 2000 and, uh, in 2005 with the hope that it would allow the Palestinian leadership in Gaza to create a much better life for their people. And what happened? There was a, there was a Hamas putsch against the PLO uh, administered Gaza. So now we have a radical Islamic terror organization because of Israeli concessions. And there is no tit for tat. We, this is a hostile border. And until the Iranians decide 
that they don't want to mobilize their Hamas proxies anymore with $100 million uh, in, uh, in funding between 2017 and 2018. The, all the mm. Gazans have to do is stay away Dan? from the border, go to school, and tell the PLO to stop, uh, to, uh, to stop punishing the Gazans in, uh, in the Hamas. You've made your message very clear. Uh, thanks very much for making that as well. Dan Dyker, Director of the Political Warfare Project, Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. We appreciate your time. Thank you for being on this program. Thank you so much.